Alright, we got the ball. It's about five inches in diameter. <laughs> It smells like kerosene in here. <laughs> okay, so we've already talked about the general gameplay of uh, Steamworks and what you can do in the game. What we've done here is we've actually listed off all the different things you can do. So we talked about with the fuel, how, where you can score them, picking them up off the ground, feeding from the human player, feeding from the hopper, activating the hopper. Then with the gears, picking them up where you get them, how you can score them, and lifting off. We talked about a little bit of defensive strategies. We were initially thinking about a starvation strategy that um, would be like trying to steal all the balls, but then we looked at the quantity of balls, and that's really not a valid gameplay, we feel. Landmine ga strategy would be deploying all those balls. If they, we know the other alliance is going to get screwed up by all those balls being on the ground, they can't get over them, that might be a defensive strategy you can play. Um, so after we've kind of listed it all off, we had a discussion and we were evaluating the amount of points that everything has. And we noticed, okay, liftoff is 50 points. It's one of the few things in this game that has a, a safe spot that you can guarantee yourself to be able to do something. So if you know you can climb, you've pretty much guaranteed yourself 50 points in every match. Then looking at the, the levels, 40 points, we evaluated how many balls you'd have to score to get 40 points or 80 points for that matter. And when we looked at that, we said, okay, well, the gear's at 40 points for your first one, 40 points if you get two more. That balancing out actually gives us, you know, that's a lot of points. Now, there's going to be a lot of defense. We know that. So you might not be able to even get three, but we do think you can do one, and the amount of balls you have to score to get to 40 points is pretty substantial. So our two priorities are going to be these two items, scoring the gears and doing the liftoff. But we do feel that there is a, a very big turning point. After you get that, you can maybe get three, but to then you have to get that four more, four more gears might not be possible even in the time physically. So what we're thinking is a simple shooter that works from the human player station or the hopper. So you don't necessarily pick up off the ground, but we do think picking up off the ground would be great. We just don't know if we're going to have time in three days. So that means we have our top three priorities are going to be Lift off, scoring gears, and a simple shooter are what we're going for right now. So we're going to break up into teams. We've got the kit bot chassis we're going to build with some of the new Evo shifters. Get that going. We're going to start prototyping all these different components and get going building this robot. Thank you. All right, we got our box of balls from Andy Mark. They're in early. They come in bags of six says they're a five inch diameter ball, resin dent, screaming yellow, so that's pretty cool. Um, quick measurements, looks like we've got about, yeah, it's about five eighths, or five, five inches, it's pretty close. Um, not exactly spherical, you can see that there is a rise in the ball. The holes are pretty impressive, they're, they're pretty large. Uh, shows that they're about uh, just under an inch. So the, the hard thing I think about this ball is going to be that it's, it compresses in a, in a sort of weird way. It doesn't necessarily compress like a normal ball, more like dense. You can kind of see when you pr apply a little pressure, it's going to deform just like a wiffle ball would or a plastic ball. So uh, it's not like a poop ball where we can just squeeze it and kind of pop it out. It's, it might cause some interesting flight patterns and we might have to be real careful about how uh, we shoot it. That discussion. Nice. You can quickly put them together with an impact drill, apparently. How to screw a screw. They're keyed, so they come together nicely. Someone did some engineering work on these. Okay, there's definitely some alignment section here. Nicely injection molded. Yeah, these are a pretty decent design. These are custom. I imagine you could 3D print these if you had a large enough printer, but it's probably cheaper just to buy them. I don't know, what did you say? It's about... 12 inches in diameter. That's what the spec says. For teams who are working in their own strategy sessions today, I would recommend that you guys really look close at all of this. Do some, some, some very detailed analyses on how many balls you think you can score uh, in, in the time frame, 
or for that matter, how many gears you think you can, you can score. Look at, think about defense. It's not going to be a field that robots aren't going to be able to hit you. It's a big, it's a relatively open playing field except for the key. So look at that. Look at some of the past VEX FTC games where they've been shooting wiffle balls. See how the volume, how fast they can shoot. Look at 2005, 2006 FRC. Uh, ring it up, I mean, or <laughs> ring it up. Aim high. Uh, we were shooting a, a, a large amount of poof balls that year. Look at the rate of fire of those. That's what we were, we were looking at, and we're, our memory's a little fuzzy. We don't have the time to research it, but look at that rate of fire to understand how many balls you can actually score um, because we might be off base. It might be that, hey, it's not a problem. Um, and, we, and oh my gosh, lining up for scoring gears is, is going to be really ridiculously difficult. Um, it's, we're going off of our gut feeling, but as a team, you guys should get together, look at all this historical stuff, do some testing, try to throw a ball, see how fast you can throw balls. Um, a lot of math and things like that. We did some back of the napkin numbers. This is where we came, so teams can, can look at all that uh, going forward.